be a little careful when we go to the public to make sure the folks that we're sending out there have some training, have the personalities, are not going to argue with Joe and Jane. These folks become school ambassadors. I know districts where there are thousands of school ambassadors. Being an ambassador becomes a kind of an elite designation in the school system, in the school building. And these folks are continually trained and sent out to talk to a list of opinion leaders that is very carefully compiled. Question number one, do you know who the opinion leaders are in your targeted colors? Who are the 25 senior citizens in this area that if I could go out next week and have a conversation with each of them, I could be very sure that by the week after that, maybe a thousands of senior citizens would have heard about my conversation because the opinion leader would spread it through the network. Who are those people? Who are the 15 businessmen? Who are the parents that other parents say, ooh, yeah, wow. We have to have a list of those opinion leaders and we send the ambassadors out to talk to them. Then there are more formal, more sophisticated systems, but I'm going to leave it at that. Because I would suggest you take a hard look. If you don't already have it, at a formal ambassador program and at a school public relations team approach. Now, we need to talk about one tricky point that has developed. How about relationships with business? Everybody says this is what we have to do, and they're right. Whether we like it or not, business has made itself a factor in the equation of school change. But I have to tell you, it isn't always a good idea. Many business people feel that this is an advertising and a marketing opportunity. Many other businessmen come marching in the door and say, well, now, you don't know how to manage, so we're going to show you how to manage and run your finances. And I love to be in those meetings, because then I turn to them and I say, wow. You who have run the savings and loans and the banks and the auto companies so well are really going to come and show us how, right? Usually there's a moment of silence. And you know what the funny thing is? Today, we in the schools are a primary source of teaching businessmen how to run organizations that are no longer top down and higher up. Every business in America is struggling with this quality initiative. With restructuring, with teaming, with getting rid of middle managers, flattening the organization, getting people to participate in decisions. I keep telling them, hey, come to the schools. We've been doing this for years. Maybe we can teach you. I put that forward to you for this reason. I am finding wonderful examples, as I trust you have maybe going for you right here now, of business school relationships which are mutual learning experiences. Mutual learning experiences. You talk about having businessmen who are standing behind the schools. That's the businessman who comes over and says, you know, we're moving into this quality thing. And I can't get all of you. I need a boss. I need someone to tell them what to do. And you say, hey, come on. Observe <coughs> how we do it in the schools. It's not a neat process. Of course, a lot of opinions will be expressed. But it works. In the long run, it works, because people have participated in the decision. I see these businessmen going out of there saying, wow, it's not as simple as I thought. And the next step to them is to realize how what we have to inculcate in children's minds and behaviors has changed over the last 10 years, to say nothing over the last 30 years, when most senior successful businessmen were themselves students or parents. <coughs> So, obviously, we need a relationship with the business community, but we need to question whether they're going to help us or whether we're going to mutually help one another. And we need to be very careful, I believe. It's another point that you have to come to one clear voice on. We have to be very careful to make sure that the schools are not seen as the vocational training ground for the great American economic system. And it's always seen to me as my mother-in-law, who spent almost 90 years in the wilds of northern Maine as principal of a school, used to say, 
I don't really need my education to be school principal near as much as I need it to have a happy, productive life miles away from, quote, civilization. So I think those who don't get jobs may need education more to be productive human beings than those who end up on the top of the economic machine. Well, I needed to mention that because I think it is a problem. What does all this mean? Well, here's my strategy. This is my strategy. I said I wouldn't give you any formulas, but uh, I'll share with you this one bit. Five-point strategy that you might want to think about inculcating into a one clear voice program. Point one, go direct to the key people. Do not allow the media, the critics, or others to stand between you and your key publics. Maybe we should have a word about the media. I hope everyone here realizes that our view of the media in the United States is mythic. It is totally mythic. We talk about the fairness of the wonderful free press. Go on, read about the history of journalism. These are the wonderful, balanced journalists who, for heaven's sake, started the Mexican-American War, started the Spanish-American War. Journalists have, today, a huge problem, and that is known as survival. I can say this because the two largest media organizations in America, the newspapers and the broadcast stations, are both clients with whom we work. Their problem is very simple. You can phrase it in a question. What is the newspaper of 1990? Seven going to look like? How is it going to be delivered? Are we going to get it on our TV screens or in our computers, or will it still come to the door in the morning? Television people want to know, holy Moses, when high definition television comes along in just two years, and when on the new cable systems there are 508 channels, what is this going to do to media? Don't you love it? 508 channels on your cable system? Continental Cable is a client of ours. And and, and I have had a chance to see their systems that have 500 main channels. You know, you come home from work and you're really pooped and you say, tonight I'm just going to veg out in front of the tube. And so at 7.30 and you sit down and you pick up the channel guide and you start reading. <laughs> <laughs>
are in that age where they're going to educate themselves regardless. Now, we might not like the outcome particularly, but you know, curiosity, questing, that's childhood. Senior citizens have lost that resilience, and they're scared to death. Health, finance, keeping themselves alive and interested. You know all those questions that they face. Hey, aren't we the educators? Then why aren't we educating them, bringing them into the system? Instead of leaving them out there to shoot at us, maybe you've already done this, but can we find a way to make them part of the system? I have one school district where we got everyone to agree that mandatorily we were going to offer coursework on Saturdays, and you know how tough that is, and evenings for senior citizens. We were going to become the institution so that seniors, when we talked about doing things for the schools, didn't say the schools, they said my school. To show how it works, every teacher within a five-year period had to do their share by offering one course during one period of time. Well, everybody could do it except the football coach. And he didn't know what to teach. He didn't figure calisthenics for seniors would go over. Of course, he was wrong, man. I don't know that they love this. So you know what he ended up finding when he got right to the deadline where he had to produce? He taught football for football widows. Okay? You know what? In that school system today, you have to sign up for this course two years in advance. <laughs>
I think they should report the principal so that the principal is involved and, and steered. But the National Association of Secondary School Principals is a client of mine, and I have promised them I will never in my whole long life ever suggest any more work for principals. <laughs> Whenever the devil speaks, he speaks English. <laughs> 